In this video, I'm going to go over the Uscript sample project. This sample project is available on the OPSIV website under Behavior Designer Samples. All right, so let's see what's happening. The first thing is that this is the player that has a behavior tree added to it, and he's going to try to kick the ball into the goal that I am defending. So I'm the goalkeeper, and he's a player on a penalty kick. So I'm going to hit play so you can see it happening. And, whoa, I stopped it on the first time. That normally doesn't happen. So I blocked it, and now he scored on the second time try. That's normally what happens. Oops. So that's basically all that there is to it. This entire scene was created just with Uscript and Behavior Designer. There was absolutely no scripting involved at all. Let's go ahead and look at the behavior tree. And here it is. It's pretty big. There's a lot of tasks, but all these tasks are pretty easy to explain and there's nothing too complicated going on. You can see for every action and condition task, there are only use script tasks. So to start things off, the very first thing we do is just wait a couple of seconds just to ensure that the player is ready and don't just kick the ball one right after another. The next thing is we check to make sure the AI is in front of the ball and it's actually ready to be kicked. So let's go ahead and look at that use script. So this is ready. We can just see that we are checking, just checking a variable to see if the behavior tree or if the AI is ready. And it just returns whatever this variable is, the value of it. So that was easy. The next thing is we have a selector that will choose one of the following, one, two, three, five, yeah, five branches. So the very first branch is a sequence test that checks to see if the goalkeeper is looking. And we can do that by opening this uscript task. And you can see it's fairly large. Well, I guess not that bad. But we get a we get the forward vector of the goalkeeper and the player, and we compute the dot product of it, and then we make our decision based on that dot product, and we set a bool and we return that bool. Uh, true or false. So if the player is looking towards the, or if the goalkeeper is looking towards the player, then it returns success. If it is looking away from the player, then we return failure. So let's see what we do with that. If the player, if this returns failure, that means the player or the goalkeeper is not looking forward. So we want to just go ahead and kick the ball as soon as we can, just so that we don't give them any more chance of of actually stopping the ball. So we're going to then go to a selector that will either check to see is the goalkeeper to the left or is the goalkeeper to the right. We can do that by getting the transform of the goalkeeper and just comparing it with some value and then we'll set a bool to return if the goalkeeper is to the left or right of that value. So in this case if I'm looking at is goalkeeper to the right, so it returns true if it's greater than that value, it will return false if it's less than the value. So if the goalkeeper is to the left, we're going to set a lower right kick, so we're going to kick it to the opposite, opposite side. If the goalkeeper is to the right, we're going to set a lower left kick, again, kicking it to the opposite side. So let's go ahead and look at one of those set lower left kicks. And as you can see here, we're just basically setting a vector three to this value, which is in the lower left. And so we're just setting this value. One of the tasks or one of the behavior or the U script graphs later on will actually use this value. And we're always returning success. So that's the first two branches. The next branch will determine if, actually, no, that was just yeah, that was, that was just the first one. All right, this next one will determine if the goalkeeper is jumping. If it is jumping, then we'll kind of do something similar just to kind of kick it as soon as we can to keep them off guard. We've already looked at all these tasks, so the only one we haven't is this, is goalkeeper jumping. 
and that is just by getting the rigid body velocity of the goalkeeper. And if the magnitude is greater than 0.02, we'll return true. If it's less than, we'll return false. So if it's greater than 0 .02, 0 0.02, we're going to return success. And less than, it's going to return failure. So if the goalkeeper is jumping, then we'll perform either a right kick or a left kick. The next, we check to see if the goalkeeper is far to the left. If the goalkeeper is far to the left, then we'll kick it to the right. And this is very similar to the is goalkeeper left, just we're checking just more of an extreme value. And I guess I should mention that if any of these get to the state where one of these returns true, such as this like return or set lower right kick, that means since this is a selector, it's going to return and it's not going to run any of these tasks after it. So only one of these tasks are going to run. So we've checked to see if the goalkeeper is to the far left. If it is, then we'll return success. If, and then the next branch, we check to see if the goalkeeper is to the far right. If it is, we'll kick it to the left. And then the last one is we don't really have a good strategy, so we're just going to randomly set uh, we're just going to randomly kick it to the lower left, lower right, upper left, or upper right. Now, what this branch has basically done has set us which position we need to actually kick the ball, and now we actually need to kick the ball. And that's done with one last U script. And this one has a few more steps to it, but it's still not too bad. We first need to set that bool, that original bool that said whether or not we are ready, we need to set it to false because we are not ready anymore because we are going to be changing positions to actually kick the ball. We're going to be remembering what position we were previously at. We're going to set the position that we should be at to actually kick the ball. We're going to move to that position and then we're going to kick the ball by setting a rigid body velocity on that ball so that it will actually do the movement. And then we're just going to wait a little bit and then move back to the original location. We're also going to return from this U script graph. So that was basically all that it takes. And then it will, it will rerun again from the very start. So this entire scene was yeah, again, made just with you script.